Hey there guys, uh, today what I'm going to be doing is showing you guys how to build a swamp cooler, or an evaporative cooler, or a desert cooler. They're all the same thing, and uh, they're pretty cool. <laughs> that was not supposed to be a pun, but anyways, what you're going to need, as you can see this one's already pretty much done, but you know, I can just explain how to put it together, it's very simple. Uh, you need just a couple tools, you know, just a few parts lying around, and you got yourself a swamp cooler. Okay, so what you're going to need is any sort of fan. you got to be creative when you build one of these, you know, with what resources you have, and, uh, you know, with whatever you got, whatever will work. Um, I personally like these little squirrel cage fans that have the two ports on each side, and you can get these out of those pedestal fans, you know, just for moving air in, like, a living room or something that, you know, they usually... Uh, oscillate, they're just like a, a pole, that's what the fan looks like. If you take one of those apart, you usually got one of these in there, that or cross flow, you want the squirrel cage, which is this kind. You'll know the difference once you get both of them, but they usually are multi-speed, so you're just going to have to do some wire work and figure out which one's which. You're probably going to want it on uh, you know, permanent high settings, so. Then you're going to need your container of choice to build the cooler in. Now this time I built my swamp cooler in a cooler because it is very tough, you know, it's not like a, uh, a storage, you know, bin where you can basically break them just by pushing them in. This thing's tough as hell. Um, you're going to need a cord, a fountain pump, some tubing, a PVC pipe that fits with the tubing and the pump, a switch. And that is about it. Oh yes, one more thing. The most important part is the pad. This is a Duracool uh, Advanced Swamp Cooler Pad. Apparently it's the most advanced one you can get. And uh, it claims that it cools better than Aspen. It's, you know, if you have allergies, it's much better than Aspen because Aspen can cause allergies. Uh, it does not decay. And it's designed to be cleaned and recycled so basically you can wash these and keep reusing them unlike Aspen which uh, leaves straw all over in your cooler like that you know everywhere so this looks like it's gonna be a good pad I've never used one before so we'll just have to see how it goes now what you're gonna want to do with these pads when you build a cooler is you're gonna want to double them up you don't want to just use one single one one uh, well, I guess it just depends on what kind of a fan you're using. Because this fan is a squirrel cage fan, it will create a lot more um, suction, I should say. You know, negative pressure. So, uh, doubling them up will give you twice the cool. But, um, anyways, let's get to how this thing works and how to build it. So, you got your fan. This one's just mounted by... Uh, three screws right here that I just screwed right into the plastic of the fan, and you got your switch over there. This fan is drawing air in from here. When the lid is shut, it'll draw air in from here. This is where the pad's going to sit. And as this pad sits here, this pump down here, which is a fountain pump, draws water, or pushes water up through this PVC pipe, which has a whole bunch of little holes cut in the bottom, so it drains water onto the pad. So you're sucking hot, dry air through a cold, moist pad, and that cools the air through evaporation. Um, that's basically all you need to know on how to build a swamp cooler. You know, uh, it's, it's very simple, but I've gotten many requests on, you know, how to build one and stuff, but it's pretty much self uh, you know, explanatory, uh, explanatory, I don't know how to say that word. Um, and it's it's pretty simple you know just very basic basic things you just gotta kind of engineer whatever you want um, I can't give you an exact you know how to build one uh, you know teaching session because I am very limited to parts as you are probably too so you just gotta build it out of whatever you can that's basically what I'm trying to get across here so what you're going to see me doing in this video today is I'm going to be cutting this pad to size and doubling it up and installing it and then, you know, firing this thing up and showing you how it works. First got to remove, or not remove, but move the pump because it's in a bad position right now. So you can just give me just a second while I do that. 
There we go, that'll be good. All right, so I'm gonna show you this unit running with the water ball, you know, going uh, before I put the pad in, just so you can see it. There it is. As you can see, there's water coming out. Without the pad, it actually likes to spray it all over the place on, you know, outside of the cooler. So that's why I didn't do a long run on it. You gotta adjust the water bar just right so you got it spraying onto the pads and not outside. So I think I just did that properly. Let's see. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and cut the pads to size. And how I'm gonna do that. I'm going to take this length, put my finger right where I would like to cut it, and just cut a clean strip all the way down. Just keep in mind, we still need to double this thing up. So turn the camera over here, we'll get to that. Right after I find my scissors, give me just a minute, folks. Alright, got my scissors. <coughs> I've got the place marked where I want it to be. Now we're just going to cut directly down. And uh, I could recommend saving all the scraps you get from it like this because you never know if you'll ever need that for another cooler. Perhaps you wanted to build one for your car or something, you know? Just a little cooler. All right, got this pretty right. But, um, yeah, you never ever know what you could use it for. This material is so much nicer than the Aspen pad because it does not, you know, flake off everywhere. Cutting the Aspen pad is just ridiculously hard, too. Alright, let's see how this fits in there. Now, cut it a little bit too big, just, you know, because better too big than too small. So we're going to trim a little bit more. Back when I lived in Arizona, I made tons of these coolers for my friends and for myself. I never once ever bought a small cooler. There we go. That's the appropriate size. Now we're going to cut a few more. I might just go ahead and go all out and cut, um, make it a three-ply setup. Alright, let's just fold this over and try that. We'll give that a shot. That might work. All right. I'll we'll put in the second or third layer, I should say. There we go. And as I said, these scraps will be very useful because what I'm going to do right now is use some to make a little barrier to hold the pad, you know, to kind of press it in there. So, I'll go ahead and cut off a little piece. But see, you can make a little mini swamp cooler with a pad this big, you know, uh, for your car, you know, just a little personal one, you know, whatever it be you want to use it for. Okay, so, let me check the back side, that looks good. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see how she works. Looks like we have a small kink in the hose. That actually might be a good thing because it's restricting the flow a good amount. And uh, that will, you know, not overpower it with water. So, what you're going to want to do now is turn it around on the back side and see if it's wetting down the pads pretty good. If it is, good. It's a good thing. Uh, it appears that it's doing a pretty good job. The air is coming out nice and cool. Actually, it's very nice. You can tell a difference when you open it and then close it. It's a lot more of a temperature difference when you do that. But there it is, folks. 
that is your basic swamp cooler. Um, very simple, very easy. And even with all those padding, or with all that padding in there, I'm still getting a good amount of air. That's pretty good. But there you have it, folks.